Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create custom structures and add them to your mood board designs. So if you have projects that you're working on and your client has a stone fireplace like this, keep watching. I'm gonna show you some really simple tips and tricks that you can use, and you can use those same techniques to build out any other types of structures that you need to create for your mood board designs. So let's go ahead, we'll jump right in and just get started. I'm gonna use this design board right here. So I've already kind of uh, added in my empty room space. Um, and one of the first things that I absolutely want to do is bring in my perspective grid because that's going to help me figure out how I'm going to distort things along the side wall so that I can get the perspective accurate. Now, if you want to be able to use the perspective grid, you can just pop into the visual elements library. You're going to see it's right here, drag it out onto your design board, and then you can just scale it up and into place. Now, when you scale it up and into place, what you're really trying to do here is you're trying to make sure that the angle of the perspective grid lines are going along the same direction as the, um, as the, the side walls within your empty room image. It doesn't have to match up perfectly. So you don't have to get the grid line perfectly, um, on the edge where the ceiling and the wall meet. Just make sure that the lines are basically going in the same sort of direction so that everything is matching up. And then once you've done that, one of the things that you do want to do here is you want to make sure that you've got your perspective grid selected and then use the lock icon over here to lock it into place. And that way it won't shift around on you as you are building out your design. Now to build out this stone fireplace, I have uh, this image right here. I went online, I searched for uh, stone texture and I found this. So you can do the same thing. You can look for any sort of texture, wood, brick, whatever it is. Um, and when you find the image online that you want to use, just pop into your library. You can upload the image here and then you'll be able to drag it out onto your design board. Or you can use the new copy paste functionality within design files to just copy the image from uh, Google images and paste it directly into your mood board design. And there is a video in our video tutorial library that will show you exactly how to do that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start building out the side profile of this fireplace. So basically what I want to do is I'm going to add this uh, stone texture image here and I'm going to align it with the edge of my empty room image and the edge the bottom edge of the baseboard trim within my design and once I have it in place the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this down I just want to have a very thin kind of uh, profile for the side edge here so that I can just kind of give this fireplace a little bit of depth so I'm thinking maybe something like this we'll apply that and then now that I've done that, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the image adjustment tool and I'm going to take down the brightness a little bit because I just want to make this edge a little bit darker so that there's some contrast between the edge of the fireplace. And let me just bring that other, here we go. And what's essentially going to be the face of the fireplace. So if I pull these side by side, you're going to see that it's had, it's now got a slightly darker edge. So, what I need to do here is I need to make sure that this thin piece here goes all the way up to the ceiling. So all I'm going to do is select it, duplicate it, line it up above, and then I'm just going to duplicate it again and bring it all the way up to the ceiling edge here. And that will do the trick. So this is the side profile of our fireplace. Now what we can do here is I'm just going to bring this full image back in here. Now what we can do is we're going to basically create the face of the fireplace. And I'm just going to duplicate a few of these here so that I've got some options that I can just pull in instead of having to um, drag it from the library again and then re-edit the image uh, by bringing in the full background. So I've already edited this and now I'm going to duplicate it so I've got multiple options to work with. So here we go. We are going to now create the face of this fireplace and I'm just going to shift my screen around here, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm up to. If I want to make sure that I am distorting this along the correct perspective, one of the easiest things that I can do here is use the image uh, adjustment tools and I'm going to take the transparency down maybe even to like 30% so I can see the lines through the image and then that's going to help me uh, distort this so that I'm following the grid lines. So now that I've done that, I'm going to select the image. I'm going to go to the distort tool right here and I'm going to start distorting this image into place. Now in my case, 
what I want to do here is I'm going to uh, align the top and the bottom edges with the grid lines here. So I'm going to pull this in. And in this case, I really, I don't have to like match it up with the line perfectly. I just need to make sure that we're kind of following that same perspective here. So um, this looks pretty good to me. And the other important thing here is that you always want to make sure that you're keeping your vertical lines 100% vertical. You're only ever really distorting the horizontal lines if you are trying to distort, uh, distort something on the side wall. So now that I've got this piece in place, I'm just going to apply it and I can bring the full transparency back in so we can see what this is looking like. And you can see how that stone looks like it's going along the correct perspective. So I'm gonna bring in the next piece. We're gonna do the same technique. So it's very, very simple. And uh, let's see here, I'm going to, I'm gonna take down the transparency. So again, we'll take this down to 30% so I can see through it and see where all the uh, grid lines are. And then again, I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to use the distortion tool and I'm going to pull these corners in and line it up. Oh, let me just undo that. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so in this case, it actually did uh, match up with one of the grid lines. So my goal is just to make sure that this point is also matching up with the grid line. Uh, but basically that's looking pretty good. I might choose to bring this down just a little bit, just so there's a slight overlap. So I don't have any kind of thin gaps where my two images are coming together. And then we'll apply this and um, I'm going to bring that uh, transparency back in. And again, we can see what this is looking like. And then I'm going to repeat the same um, steps for this little thin area right here. So I'll just slide this in here. And then I'm going to take my transparency down again to the 30% and distort this one into place as well. And this one is going to run along maybe a little bit higher than, there we go. And I'm just gonna tuck this one right in here. I think that should do the trick. Okay, so we're a little bit higher here than the grid line because we wanna make sure that we're kind of extruding out into the space, but I think that should basically do the trick. We're gonna apply that, and again, we're gonna take our transparency right back, and now it looks like we've got a nice, thick fireplace for this particular um, space. Now, the next thing that I would probably do here is, um, let's look up fireplace. We're gonna need an insert. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this insert right here, um, I don't need the full fireplace image. So what I'm actually going to do here is we'll use the background removal tool just to clean up this image a little bit. We're going to save it. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the crop tool and I'm only going to crop down and take the portion that I need. Now here's the thing to keep in mind here. In this case, I'm not going to take the full insert here because I don't need to see the inner side of this side uh, because we're looking into the space. So I'm gonna cut that portion off. I only really need to see the inner side uh, on this section. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's apply this. So when I bring this in here, and again, I would probably take my um, perspective or my stone image right here. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna bring that transparency all the way down because I just wanna be able to see those perspective lines. I can always bring that back when I need it. Uh, but basically I wanna take this and then I'm going to kind of place it where I want it to be within this particular uh, design. And then we're going to distort this into place as well. So I'm going to bring this in to about here. And I just want to, to kind of match the overall um, angle of the um, grid lines down here. So let's just bring this up a little bit. And I think I'll bring this one down a little bit. It's sort of, I'm going to say essentially there, right? So we'll apply that. We'll bring back our stone texture again. So now we've got our insert in here. And the next thing that I could do is I could add in, I'm going to shift this over a little bit actually. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, the next thing that I can bring in here would be the, um, the mantle for the fireplace. 
So we've got this one right here. And I don't need to see the top edge. I don't need the shadow. So I'm just going to use the crop tool. And we're going to crop this down to only the pieces that we need. And I'm just going to kind of narrow that down a little bit. Now, I need two pieces for this because I'm going to show a bit of the profile on this side and then the lengthwise portion that's going to run across the front of the fireplace. So we're going to take, I'm just going to duplicate another piece of this. And again, what I'll do here is I'm probably going to use the crop tool and I'm just going to take a little square section of this. So this is going to be my side profile piece. Again, what I'll probably do is I'm going to take that stone texture down. I don't want, I don't need to see that right now. And I'll take this piece down as well. And now I'll be able to see the grid line so that when I'm dealing with this mantle, I can make sure that I'm working along those specific grid lines. So now I'm going to try to line this one up right here. And what we'll do is we're going to use the distort tool yet again, drag this down. I'm going to extend this slightly beyond the edge here because I want it to feel like it's extending out into the space versus just perfectly lining up with the edge of the fireplace. So I'm going to say something that is roughly, maybe roughly there. We'll try that out to begin with. I think I'm going to have to adjust this little piece a little bit, but let's go ahead and we'll apply this. And I'm going to zoom into the edges here. Yeah, I think I, what I could do here, well, it's not bad. It's not bad, guys. All right, we can probably work with that. So let's go ahead. We're going to bring back the transparency on those stone textures. And there you go. So that's how you can start building out um, like any sort of, um, I don't know, structural elements within your, uh, within your mood board designs. If you need to create fireplaces, you can follow this same, uh, the same steps that I've done here. You could also do these same steps if you had to create a section in the space where the wall is just kind of extending out um, into the space and you want to be able to paint it the same, um, color as the rest of the walls, you would just build this structure using, um, paint color swatches instead of adding in your own textures. But essentially, uh, these steps will help you build out any sort of structural elements you need for your mood board designs. So I hope you found these tips helpful. Um, if there are any cases where you've got questions about uh, how to use the mood board tools, always feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We are always happy to help. Thanks for watching.